Hi and welcome along to this video. I just wanted to do a, a review video of this new Yamaha flugel horn which is the 8315 GS. This is the um, so-called updated model of Yamaha's uh, kind of flagship 631 that's played by a lot of players around the world. Um, otherwise known as a, a Yamaha Custom. Comes with this, uh, this lovely case here as you can see. I've been playing this around a fortnight now and I've just changed over from a Yamaha 631. Um, so I thought I'd film around it and let people have a look at it as I can't find any sort of uh, videos to look at this instrument really on YouTube so I just thought I'd film around it and I'll give uh, a few little bits of uh, knowledge that I've come across from, from this instrument. Um, the first thing is that there appears to be some confusion about this, uh, this model number as you can see here. So as you can probably see here it's actually marked up on this uh, on the this second valve as YFH 8315G um, and it doesn't have an S on the end which is something you might be concerned about if you're looking to purchase this instrument it is actually a GS, the S meaning it's silver plated so I've contacted Yamaha about this uh, just to make sure it's not been a, a lacquered one that's been damaged or anything like that and it's been repaired so I just sent them an email just basically out of curiosity but it, it, uh, it is an 8315 GS as you can see silver plated but currently they're just marking them up as 8315 so if you've purchased one recently with that model number on, it's, uh, it should be correct. The, uh, the official reply from Yamaha was, um, whilst potentially subject to change, generally both the 8315G and GS will be marked 8315G. Please see the uh, attached in large photographs and Yamaha provided those for me. I will actually play this, uh, this flugel before the end of the video, so don't worry about that, but I just wanted to uh, make a few things clear about it. Now to anybody who's been in the, the trade of selling instruments, or maybe has a bit more knowledge about them than me, um, this is actually stated as a GS as having a, a gold brass bell. So when it arrived, I was slightly surprised to see it was silver plated. Now a lot of people may laugh at that one and uh, comment below, but I actually did expect it to have a, a gold bell to you know to look at to look in. I, I expected that to be gold, and that's not the case. Um, so I did a little bit of uh, research into that just to see uh, what all that was about, and I will read you the official response I got from that as well. So when I questioned that again with Yamaha, they got straight back to me, very good uh, customer service I must say from Yamaha. Um, it says the 8315GS has a gold brass bell which along with the majority of the instrument is silver plated. I also received a, a very good uh, reply from Phil Parkers in London as well asking the same question. It said it has a gold brass bell underneath the silver plating. So to look at the instrument is all silver but the gold brass has more copper in the alloy to give a warmer sound. So the next question that I had and you may have as well is, well, what's the difference between the Yamaha 631, the Bobby Shoe model, and this 8315? What are the main differences? Well, the difference uh, for me, without going into spe to, uh, specifications, is it's right in the middle of the range. The, uh, the Bobby Shoe one for me, I play in a brass band and it always felt a little bit small, although it was a great instrument, it always felt a little bit small. Um, and the Yamaha 631 was a great instrument for playing in the brass band but all, almost to a lot of players have, have described it as just a little bit uh, too big sounding, too horny sounding if you like um, and this sits right in the middle which I really like um, the main things that I do really really like about the redesign and I do view this as an upgraded model of a 631 is the, 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 bar slide, the bar size is uh, slightly smaller as I've just mentioned but the trigger's in a far better place for your hand, it's longer um, and the whole instrument just feels to be built like a lot more solidly. I mean, I let someone have a blow on it the other day and uh, you can take this as you wish. But um, he actually described it as not feeling like a Yamaha. So take that as you will, but that's how he described it. Good or bad, that's, that's, um, I would tend to go along with that. It feels a lot more solid than the old ones I've played. It isn't as flat on the first valve. They tend to be really flat sometimes on the first valve on these Yamaha flugel horns. But the, the redesign of this just seems to have taken care of a lot of that. And the intonation is far, far better than the 631 for anyone looking to upgrade. Everything works straight out of the box. Even the bottom sprung valves appear to be uh, far superior than the one I've been playing. Um, as I say, the trigger... It's, uh, the worst thing about the trigger is I actually, out of habit, I actually go to use it on a bottom D say and then I find it's really flat because actually it's so in tune I've, I've hardly even touched it. Now apparently one of the main redesigned features of this instrument is this all new lead pipe which as you can see here starts off uh, thicker and then sort of tapers back into here. Now 
I don't know exactly how all this works, but one thing I will say that a lot of people um, have commented on is some people like this and some people don't. But what some people can't quite get used to is it is actually a little bit further away from from uh, your face, you know, the, the actual bell. It feels a lot longer does the instrument than the actual 631. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but I think the plus side to that is that when I'm playing in a, in a large group or a brass band, I can actually feel what I'm playing a lot more than I can. On the uh, on the smaller one, it seems to be uh, gives you a lot more um, sort of feedback, if you like, when you are playing. So I'll play a few notes on it, and we'll have another look round it. And the basic uh, idea of the video is so people can comment. I realise these are you know about two and a half thousand pounds to buy. So I just thought I'd come in here tonight and um, film this video because it's really I can't find anything at all on on uh, YouTube just to show the instrument. I know a lot of people like to have a really really good look at things, so. Um, I'm doing my best to film around it, and I'll, I'll apologise. I have uh, I have actually got a cold at the minute, but I'm really really impressed with this instrument. The main things I'm impressed with are the the build quality feels really solid. The intonation it just feels more accurate to play without feeling too small, um, like the Bobby Shoe one does for me anyway. I think they've hit the nail on the head with this. It even comes with this lovely Yamaha custom case, which is uh, not too big to carry through a city centre and look like you're going on holiday, but quite cleverly designed, just so you can get some uh, some music in it as well. So I can just get a folder in there, you see, and I can shut that without causing any damage to this instrument. So I'll put this uh, camera on a tripod and I'll just play you a few notes. As you can see this uh, this trigger is actually in a, in a really really nice place for your fingers. actually feels really solid to hold, the valves work really well, nice and quiet as well. Probably comes out louder on the camera. Well, that's, in a, that's in a lovely place, there's plenty of space up here as well for your finger. It's so just a little bit uh, nicer to hold. As I say it just feels a little bit further away as you're playing. Um, and I've got used to that in, in kind of a week or so, so I'll play a few notes. Um, apologies now for all wrong ones but I'm a little bit out of form at the minute. But I know people like to hear what it sounds like. I'll just try and play a few notes for you just to demonstrate the uh, the kind of the tuning and hopefully you'll get a little idea of the sound of the instrument although I'm just using my uh, normal microphone on my video camera so <laughs> deep enough sound without feeling too thin. is when you run up to a D, I'll play a passage in a minute, in a middle D, it's not really flat on the first valve which is lovely. Now I've, I found a lot of the time on the 631 it was, it was a bit more like and you were really lipping it up, but the intonation of this instrument right through, uh, right through the range is really really good. I've done a really good job of doing this, so I'll play you a few of the little bits that you, you probably won't like, but anyway, I'll play them just for uh, the sake of the video.
So, um, excuse me, I'm full of cold at the minute. I've done my best to uh, play a few notes there, although it wasn't great. I hope you get some idea of the sound of the instrument. I'll just blow a few more notes, point you straight at the camera, which probably won't sound great. Just um, a few different directions so you get a good idea. So hopefully you, you uh, will get a decent idea of the sound. Not quite as big as the 631, not quite as big, but it's very, very close and more accurate to play. Uh, and certainly nicer to play within a, a, a large group. The, the feedback's really nice. It's probably got something to do with this lead pipe. Now that's out of my technical range to talk about things like that. So I'll put it back on the tripod and we'll have one final look. And um, just have a look down below at the comments and uh, leave me any comments and if there's anything I can help with, um, just from an amateur point of view really, just uh, leave a comment and I will get back to you and hopefully it'll be something silly like, um, I noticed just then actually when I was playing it, it doesn't actually have uh, the hole here for actually a uh, matching layer, just little things like that, not that you really want one on an instrument like this hopefully, but um, the 631 has it on and this one doesn't, just little differences, so if you've got any questions like that, just get in touch with me and I'll do my best to uh, to let you know. So just a few things that people might want to know as well, the actual uh, valves are bottom sprung as you can see there's no, there's no springs in the centre of the valves, the actual springs sit in the bottom of this valve casing here um, and they all work you know, fantastic, I mean I've oiled them a little bit since it came uh, out of the box but the idea with these valves is I've learnt over time is only use the valve oil that's supplied by Yamaha, the synthetic stuff and if you're going to oil them then uh, wash them and dry them off make sure they're completely dry and re-dry, uh, re-oil them with uh, Yamaha valve oil, I don't have too much trouble anything else like uh, blue juice or anything just seems to be too thick and you have massive problems but uh, a little bit of Yamaha valve oil on now and again um, seems to work nice these threads are slightly better than they were as well on the older one, they seem to uh, have a bit more quality about them although they're quite short they don't feel like a Besson Cornet for example feel it all goes back together quite nicely you can see the, uh, as you'd expect from a new instrument, the slides are very uh, neat and precise as well. You can see just how it all goes. Just thought I'd just have a look around the instrument while I'm filming. Just before someone asks, as well as they always tend to do, I'm currently playing on a Dennis Wick uh, 3FL mouthpiece. Yeah, it's a, just a standard Dennis Wick 3FL mouthpiece. The L just stands for large, I think, because this is actually slightly wider, so it actually fits in the receiver properly. If you have one that's just a 3F or a 4F or a 2F or whatever, it'll actually fit in quite a lot further than that. And I, th I, I believe the uh, the correct taper for the mouthpiece for this instrument, if I'm speaking correctly, is the uh, the one with the L on in the Dennis Wick range. Anyway, I never play any other mouthpieces, but Dennis Wick. Um, and that fits in quite nice, does a Dennis Wick 3FL so if you're looking for a mouthpiece um, that fits this 8315 Yamaha instrument that uh, that does the job uh, a 2FL would be um, equally as good or a 4FL is probably the most um, common choice of people I know that play flugel there's uh, three water keys on here this first valve one, there's one on the uh, the trigger slide as well and there's one on the uh, the usual place where you'd expect it, so three and I, I have to say normal normal water keys which I like as, the, as opposed to the other ones that you press it like a button that don't really work very well which um, I'm glad to see as well another little note this actual case actually comes supplied with a strap as, we, uh, it, as well it comes with it there's a strap that goes on there and I think it hooks onto here so you can put it over your shoulder so I'll point out I don't think I'll ever use it but it does come with it for anybody who's got to travel with it I thought that might be of use noting as you can see there the, uh, there's quite a big difference between the size of the, uh, the instrument if you look at the mouthpiece or the receiver it's actually quite a lot longer is this instrument um, and I'll just show you here the actual trigger I've said before I really prefer on that it's nice and long and it just works better it just seems to uh, it's just been redesigned it just does a better job um, and I think the uh, the actual piping of this is just slightly narrower than all of the uh, it's a really bad word and it? it's probably tubing but you know what I mean let's call it piping or tubing it seems just slightly smaller on this newer one than this as you can see the lead pipe as well 
is really near the instrument actually on this uh, this one here. This is the 6301. It's quite a lot longer away there. But the bell size is the same and they play pretty similar. This uh, this one, the 8315, just seems a bit more accurate. And the little uh, differences between them is this just has a little bit of a, a little bit of a rounder sound. The intonation uh, suffers a lot more I would say. But I thought, uh, as I remembered there, I've got it in the car, I thought I'd just put them side by side for anybody looking to uh, um, compare the two. So yeah, the same size bell. This one's got a slightly smaller ball. This is, I think, this is 413, and this is 433, if I'm, if I remember correct. But you can check that on uh, pretty much any website that sells these. Both bottom sprung uh, valved instruments, so no change there. And uh, both play really well, actually. But um, I'm definitely moving on to this newer one. As I said before, just a little note that this one doesn't actually. Uh, this one actually has uh, the screw here and the, the mounting for the layer, and this newer one doesn't have that. Might not be a big deal breaker to you but it may be to somebody who's watching the video. The actual ball size of this instrument is uh, 0 0.413 key of B flat uh, with a 6 inch bell and um, as I've said before many times this is the 8315 GS even though it doesn't have the S stamped on this uh, on this valve block here as the uh, Yamaha have stated that they've marked a fuel plate that until they um, start producing a few more it's subject to change it should be stamped on there. But if you do get one, once again, if you do get one that hasn't have, that doesn't have the GS on the end, I wouldn't worry too much. It is, uh, it is uh, the uh, customary way that Yamaha are doing this. So I hope that helps anybody at all looking to spend around £2,500 on this instrument. Would I rate it out of 10? What would I rate it? I would probably rate it a 9. It's that good, actually. It's, um, it's one of the best I've played. It's actually as in tune as a Courtois 154 I used to own, but a lot easier to play, especially at the top end. So that's, um, you know, if you look back at my other videos on the air, I've actually reviewed these other instruments, which have been brilliant. This is right in the middle. It really feels like a really nice, uh, a really nice flugelhorn. I'm really, uh, really impressed with the, the redesign of this and the actual uh, way it actually performs. So. Um, thanks for watching. Please like and please subscribe. I'll do whatever people need to do on YouTube and share the video about. It will help people out looking for a review on this. Because I understand when you're looking online at things that uh, you can read the specifications but without actually having to uh, be able to see it close up it can be quite difficult. So I've done my best. Although um, my Yorkshire accent might not help a lot of people too much. This was my review of the Yamaha 8315 GS Custom Flugelhorn. I hope it's helped uh, a few people out. Any questions, please ask. Thanks very much. I'll just play a few notes on this. Um, hopefully I'm stood far enough away that it won't sound too odd. I'm just using a normal video camera. <laughs> bottom end as well um, and the middle D isn't flat if I had a lot of flugels if I was playing that it'd be very flat it'd be more like which is quite nice I find the intonation is really good
made that up actually, it's not so bad, is it? Well, I didn't make it up, obviously it's a song, but you know, I didn't know I could play it if you like. Anyway. Thank you.